Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Diana. You can find me online in various places. I am Diana Walla on Ravelry. I am Cake and Vikings on Instagram. Uh, you can find me at my blog, Paper Tiger, or we also have a uh, Paper Tiger Ravelry group and I will put links to all of those things in the description box just below. Um, it's been a really long time again since my last video. This was not intended, but it's been an absurdly busy year. The biggest piece of news I'm just gonna get out of the way up front. Um, my partner and I have moved back to Norway. So I was living in Montreal for a couple of years, but we have come back to Norway where we lived previously. We are now living in Trondheim and um, we moved in June. So it's been several months now. Um, we are loving the city so far, but uh, it's also been, that's part of why I've had such a long absence. I didn't know last March when my last video was if this move was going to happen. Um, I had applied for a job, I got the job, and so we have moved here. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about all of that. Um, because the, yeah, the short story is that I'm, we've been living in temporary apartments. We still don't have all our stuff. Um, we're finally moving into our own place in a couple of weeks and we'll be reunited with everything. But I don't have all of my supplies. I don't have my whole kit. Uh, and, and I just don't have all of the supplies I normally use to make a video. So because I don't have everything I normally shoot a video with, um, I thought I would do something a little bit simpler and I thought a Q&A question and answer video would be a nice way to sort of check in with everybody, share the news about the move, um, and just let you know that I haven't forgotten about this channel. <laughs> I did film another tutorial video before the move, which I had intended to release this fall. Um, but I heard from a handful of people who have used my Latvian braid tutorial video that they found the, the really shallow focus um, either distracting or um, it actually made them nauseous, uh, which I can understand, I guess. Personally, I like the shallow focus. It shows me what to focus on, but I certainly don't want to make anyone nauseous. So I went and I looked at the footage that I'd shot, but it was I shot it the same way I shot the Latvian braid video. So the focus thing was still a thing. So I think I'm going to reshoot that rather than putting up another video that might make people nauseous. I don't want to do that. So anyway, I did have plans. Um, of course, it's been busier than I predicted. It's, um, it's taken longer than we thought it might to get into our own place. Um, but hopefully after the new year, we'll be really settled in and um, I'll have a space again where I can shoot and uh, make more videos than I really want to because I've missed it. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I asked on my Instagram stories for just um, some questions. So I only got a few, so I think I might actually be able to answer all of them. The couple of exceptions are a few of you asked design related questions um, about designing or being a designer. And I'm actually gonna save those for a different video that I have been planning for a long time. Um, so these are more, I mean, they're knitting related, but they're sort of more general or more personal questions. Um, so the first question, La Mont Baluchon asked, when did you start knitting? How did you learn? Um, I learned when I was a kid originally, my mother taught me and my mother is also a skilled and talented knitter. She learned from her Oma. Um, and yeah, I mean, I started like a lot of people started. I think I had some acrylic yarn in my memory. It's sort of a pinky mauve color and I had yellow plastic needles and I learned to cast on and um, knit garter stitch and I remember knitting a little square that I never really finished. Uh, that was the first thing that I can remember knitting and it was full of holes and I had accidentally increased at the ends and all kinds of things like that. So it was a, it was a mess. I don't know how old I was, but I was younger than 10, I would say. Um, yeah, and I just remembered the, the squeaky feeling of the yarn and the plastic needles together. They were um, vintage needles that were, you know, my mom's could have been from her grandmother, I don't know. Um, but that was when I learned. Um, I really didn't get super into it until high school. Um, I was in high school in the, the early 2000s, sort of when the, the new wave of knitting started happening again. And, um, Debbie Stoller was coming out with the Stitch and Bitch books and all of that sort of stuff. So, um, 
And I, I spent a lot of time online and found craft blogs and craft communities as well, pre-Ravelry of course, but um, that's when I started to get into it for real. And initially I was still just making really simple scarves and things like that. And they weren't, they were really, they were narrow and they weren't that long. Um, they were just something fun. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I made a lot of scarves for myself or, or friends or, um, there were a couple of Harry Potter scarves, of course. And um, yeah, eventually I moved on to other things. So the first project I knit in the round, I used metal double pointed needles and it was a pattern from Knitty. So it was a free pattern online. It was called Fetching. Um, I think a lot of people who were uh, in the online knitting world back then will remember Fetching. Um, they were a really pretty pair of cabled mitts. Um, but yeah, then Ravelry came along and um, I was just a goner. <laughs> so um, yeah, that was how I, I originally learned and sort of got back into knitting um, as a teenager in high school and college. Different Measure asked, I would love to know how you choose which sweater fits your wardrobe and taste. This is a really interesting question because I think for a lot of us, the sweaters that we like to knit might not be the sweaters we like to wear. Um, and it takes a little bit of trial and error and it takes some practice to figure out if if the if those two things don't overlap or if they do overlap and you're very lucky and what you like to knit is also what you like to wear or um yeah i think the kinds of things you gravitate towards in store-bought clothing um can help you figure out what what styles you like and things like that and and then what sweaters you might want to knit for yourself um as well and it it's yeah, it can take some time to figure out. It can also change over time. Um, I've gotten um, into knitting really simple everyday basics like this sweater. This is the no frills or the inny dicky dotted from um, Petite Knit. I've finished three of these this year. Um, they're all a little bit different, but um, each time I have finished one, I've worn it so much because it's just a really basic top down raglan and that means it's a really solid everyday staple and feels less conspicuous than some of the color work sweaters I love to knit. Um, and those in Norway, those are not necessarily conspicuous either. They're sort of, uh, it, a lot of people wear them, um, but it's uh, it feels a bit different than a really everyday basic. Um, I like to wear cardigans. I haven't knit very many of them and that comes down to preferring to knit in the round versus knitting flat. So. Um, maybe there's some some more staking in my future or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's um, I think it is a matter of trial and error, and it's an acceptance that it will change over time. Um, I knit with a lot of the same colors, for example. I knit with a lot of blue and green and gray, and I still wear a lot of blue and green and gray. But um, in the past uh, couple of years, I've been branching out to other colors. I've been wearing more warmer tones and things like that, which I don't normally gravitate towards, but they make such a nice variety in my wardrobe. So when I'm going to make a new sweater, if I wanted to knit a new sweater, I think about the sweaters I already have, um, the sweaters I wear a lot, the ones I wear less, um, and I try and think about if there are any gaps in my wardrobe. Um, if there's something I'm missing that I could make for myself. And then I asked, do I want to make that for myself? Um, or is that something I would rather buy? Um, so yeah, it's something that, yeah, you play with, it takes practice, it takes time, uh, and it evolves constantly. So that's probably not the answer that you were hoping for, but that's the answer I've got. En kopp te tak. Kristen asked, hvordan ble du så fantastisk? Kristen, du Du er så snill. Jeg er veldig glad i deg. Abby Boberg asked uh, about what you and your husband are both working on. How cold in Trondheim versus Tromsø? So Abby's been following me for a long time. I recognize her name. And uh, um, for those of you who don't know, we lived in Norway previously. Um, we used to live in Tromsø up north, way north. It's almost 70 degrees north above the Arctic Circle. Um, we were there for two years while I did a master's degree. Um, Trondheim's not as cold as Tromsø. Neither of them are anywhere near as cold as Montreal was. Um, yeah, I just... Montreal, Canada, 
it's it's different. So Norway is warmer than a lot of places at the same latitude because of the Gulf Stream, especially if you're in a coastal city, and Tromsø is a coastal city, and Trondheim it's on a fjord, but it's also basically a coastal city then. So the further inland you get, or the further up into the mountains, obviously it gets colder. Um, it's been unusually cold in, in Trondheim lately. We've been hanging out just below freezing for a couple of weeks, but it's warmed up again, and it's more like um, you know, four to six Celsius during the day, and maybe it's frosting overnight. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's cold, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not polar plunge, Arctic blast cold. The other part of the question, what we're working on, I just glossed right over that. I mentioned that we moved here for a job. That job is uh, a PhD. So I'm a PhD fellow at the university here. Uh, I started in July, um, and I mean, anybody who's ever talked about how hard a PhD is, is not joking. <laughs> That's part of the reason it's been so long since I've been here on the channel. It's just been uh, really busy. I am doing most of my coursework this semester, so that on top of looking for a place to live and preparing to move and uh, move you know, into our, our new place. And I know some of you might be interested in what field my academic work is in. The master's I did in Tromsø is in linguistics. I also have a degree in um, TESOL in teaching English as a, a second language or foreign language. Um, and this PhD is kind of combining those two things. So um, it's, a, it's a PhD in educational studies. So Kelm Scott Designs asked, um, why did you move to Norway? And I could answer for this case, but I'm going to talk about why we moved in the first place. So we moved to Tromsø in 2015. We're both originally from the US. Um, but yeah, Norway has always had a really special place in both of our hearts. Um, for my partner, there is some family history. For me, it was uh, due to befriending Norwegians online when I was a teenager and making friends that way um, and getting interested in Norway through these friends that I had made. When you come to Norway, you do get asked that question a lot. Why Norway? Why this little country in the north of Europe? But um, I've just always been drawn to it. And um, before we moved to Tromsø the first time, um, we used to visit Norway a lot. We, we started coming almost once a year. We often came for the new year. But uh, we got engaged in Norway. It's just, um, it's a place that feels really good to us. It feels like a hard question to answer, but I have lived abroad before. I, um, I studied abroad when I was at university. I spent a semester in France. After I finished my master's in TESOL, I went to Hungary and I lived in Hungary for a year where I taught. Um, and then we went to Tromsø and of course after Tromsø we moved to Montreal, which was still abroad, even if it was Canada, which is a lot more like the US, but um, Quebec is, is different. Small Bistrik asked, do you like living in Norway? Um, in general, yes. That's, that's why we came back, um, ultimately. We, by the end of our two years in Tromsø, we weren't sure that we wanted to stay. Um, we just, we didn't feel like sure enough to commit to um, staying another four years or something like that for a PhD there at that point in time. So we, we tried out Montreal um, and we have some wonderful, wonderful friends in Montreal. There's a wonderful community in Montreal, but it didn't click for us the same way um, that Norway had actually. And so leaving gave us that perspective of realizing that, um, no, actually that's, it's, it's not perfect, but that was a place that we felt really good in general. There's, there's things that are hard. Um, I mean, it's hard to be away from friends and family. It's, it's hard sometimes to be so far away from so many things. Um, but, but yeah, in general, yes, we really like it. Um, I really love it. It's, yeah, it just feels good. And then finally, a little bit out of left field, K-pop asked, for the drumlin pattern, do you have a picture of the window that inspired it? Um, yes, I will link to, um, uh, where you can see the interiors tour where I found this photo. Um, for those of you who don't know, the drumlin pattern is a scarf pattern of mine. I'll put a photo of it here. And this was inspired by a photo of a um, door with two windows in it from a Swedish home. Um, and I just thought it was this 
I don't know if it's stained glass, but it's got, you know, it's colored glass and it's really beautiful and it has this repeating motif and I thought I want to try and translate that to knitting and that was what inspired the Drumlin scarf. Um, so I will at the very least link to the photo below so that you can take a look at that. I think that's probably it for today uh, and I will, um, I think I'll leave you with a little bit of footage of just clips I grabbed here and there in the process of the move or little videos I've taken since we've moved to Trondheim um, just to give you a glimpse of our new home. Um, I feel like this town is really wonderful and um, I'm so happy to be here and I feel so grateful. Um, and I'm so grateful to all of you for coming back uh, after an absence of so many months. Um, so yeah, I will leave you with that and um, hopefully I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye.